Welcome to the Better Business, Better Life podcast. Terry DuPont is the founder of DuPont Advisory Group, a group dedicated to providing comprehensive services to successful business owners, medical, and other professionals. Terry has top of the table status in the prestigious international million dollar round table, placing him among the top one tenth of 1% of all professional financial advisors in the world. Terry's philosophy is, I learned that I grow and prosper more by focusing on the success of others rather than fretting over my own. Terry is a certified financial professional with the Institute of Financial Wellness, an advisor for the power of zero taxes in retirement, chartered retirement plans specialist, certified wealth preservation planner, and certified philanthropic developer. On the podcast, Terry brings together experts in their field who have succeeded in building their business to share their secrets with you. And now, here's your host, Terry DuPont. Welcome, everyone, to uh, this week's episode of Better Business, Better Life, Building on Your Success. And I'm your host, Terry DuPont. Ladies and gentlemen, this week, we have Kimberly Wilson with us. Now, Kimberly is an insurance professional with uh, Myers and Hayden in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And she has earned her Certified Insurance Service Representative designation. Is that right, Kimberly? Yes. Okay. And the CISR courses are known for preparing frontline professionals to analyze risk policy forms and claims and data and communicate and all those good things that help people understand everything that Kimberly does. If that makes sense. I don't know how to do it. And she's also a CISR elite. And that's one of the most advanced distinctions for customer service uh, representatives, mm -hmm. account executives and, and other uh, insurance professionals. Kimberly, welcome to the show. Welcome to the episode and to the program. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Yeah, my pleasure. Kim, do you go by Kim or Kimberly? Either, Either one, one is fine. Okay. Just, right. just don't call me late for dinner. I got you. I won't do that. And can you tell us uh, a little bit about uh, you and, and why you started your career? Well, I actually was in healthcare for many years and got to the point where it was getting a little difficult to do the physical care of people. As I get older, I had thought about insurance multiple times and I found my boss online and I kind of stalked her a little bit and <laughs> I didn't have any licenses. This was about almost three years ago. She took me in, paid for me to get my licenses. The classes has paid for my advanced classes since then. Mm -hmm. She encourages me to continue with my education. And we, as an agency, we, I feel that we have a little higher in ethics, certain things that we do that, or don't do that other agents will do that we just don't feel is right. Mm -hmm. So we, I, I really like the people I work for. Oh, awesome. That's a good place to be in. Can you tell us a little more about your decision to pursue a back bachelor's degree in the ministry? and how it has impacted your life and career. Well, that happened several years ago. I was working in healthcare. I was also working with foreign exchange students at the time. This opportunity came about, and I felt that God was calling me into missions work. So I pursued my degree in ministry, hoping to use it towards missions the one foreign mission I was scheduled to go on in Indonesia happened in 2020. <laughs> and of course that was canceled. <laughs> so I have yet to go on a, a missions trip that I was looking so forward to, but I do, I do realize that my missions here, there are plenty of people, even in this industry, clients that I, I minister to. So my mission is not necessarily overseas. It, it's right here. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you can always find a place to do some mission work. You don't have to go far, do you? That's right. What What's the uh, biggest challenge you faced uh, thus far, Kim? As far as insurance goes? Hmm. Either that remembering. or remembering. <laughs> yeah, either way. Yeah. My, my biggest challenge is just remembering there's so much to know so much to, and every company, we, ha we have about 10 different companies. Every company has different rules, different underwriting, and just making sure that what I'm giving to my clients is protecting them, 
making sure that I'm not giving them the incorrect information so they don't feel that they have coverage where they don't. Just protecting people. It, it's been hard. It's harder to remember these things when you get older. <laughs> oh, be careful. <laughs> 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 um, well, how, and how did you cut become, you know, so proficient in just three short years? Well, sales is not foreign to me. I've always been a bit of a talker. I do enjoy talking to people. I enjoy, I'm good at sales. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, that's not been a challenge for me, but it feels so good to be able to know that I'm protecting them, that I'm not just giving them legal car insurance, that I'm not just giving them the house insurance that their um, mortgage company requires them to have, but I'm actually protecting them. So if or when that accident does happen, they're not going to be losing anything. They're going to be put back to whole. Um. What led you, uh, if I may, what led you to decide on a career change after 20 years uh, in the medical field? And how did you navigate that and, and make the uh, transition? <laughs> well, I keep saying I don't know what I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just felt that insurance was something that I could get behind, that it was something that I, I felt that I would be able to learn well. Once you learn your product, it's easy to sell it, but you have to believe in that product. And I just felt like this was something where people needed education. They needed to know, you know, it, like I said, it's not just state minimum. It's not just being legal. It's learning to how to protect yourself and just something I felt I'd be good at. And I, I think I'm doing okay. Good. Tell us how's your faith influenced your approach to both your personal life and, and this new career in insurance? Well, my faith is number one to me. It's very important. I pray every day. I ask God to, to guide me, to give me wisdom. And I've missed work because of things for my church, because I feel that that's an important place for me to be. And my boss is okay with that. <laughs> okay. She's happy that I have faith. Mm -hmm. I do have to deal with course language that I don't really care for, but mm -hmm. I, you know, that's what we do as Christians. We, we live in the world. That's right. Have to oh. uh, put the blinders on sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, can you discuss the importance of educating your clients about insurance and proper coverage? I know you feel it's important to you, it but from their perspective, why do you feel it's important that they know what you're telling them? Well, people who don't understand the insurance market, the law says, Indiana law says you have to have 25,000 personal bodily injury for liability, 50,000 per accident. That's the minimum. So I have some figures here. If you have um, state minimum insurance, you have 25,000 bodily injury and you hit my car and you damage you know, my vehicle and you cause me personal injury. A typical... EMS ride to the hospital costs between $940 and $1,300. Mm -hmm. A typical helicopter ride, if you're injured and you need to, and you don't get that choice if you want to take the helicopter, they choose I, I, that. I, That's $12,000 to $25,000. A typical stay at our local hospital here is upwards of $20,000. $25,000 in bodily injury. That's gone. And that's all your insurance is going to pay. So now here I am stuck with medical bills and, you know, I don't have a car and I'm missing work and I'm not getting compensated for that. So now I'm going to turn around. I'm going to sue you. So that's lawsuits. And it could be years before I ever see any of that return to me. Now, if somebody sues you for that, they can actually garnish your wages for up to 10 years, 25% of your wages. I don't know about you, but I cannot live without 25% of my wages. Right. That would be a very difficult thing to do. So it's always better to have higher liability. And liability is cheap. It, mm -hmm. People do not realize liability is cheap. You get into the expenses when you start paying for physical damage for your vehicle. Right. 
So and the same thing with your home, liability is cheap. Get that higher liability because if you have a party and you shoot off some fireworks and burn your neighbor's house down, they're going to come after you and they're going to want all their money back. So protect those. And then you have an umbrella. An umbrella is going to go over and above the liability of your auto and your home. So if your liability is maxed at you know, either your home or your auto, then it goes into that umbrella and that protects your assets. So that's going to protect your investments. It's going to protect your savings account, your retirement account, and you're not going to have to worry so much. So any homeowner I have, I really try to encourage them to have an umbrella and to have higher liability limits on both their home and auto. Gotcha. I think you already pretty much answered my next question. <laughs> Maybe not completely. So what what is something that you, is there anything that you typically like to share with your, your clients and on a regular basis? Absolutely. I share the reason why we have an umbrella and I use a personal story and I don't really want to broadcast that personal story at the moment because mm -hmm. it does involve a friend's mother who was killed mm -hmm. and the family lives here in Fort Wayne who was related to the, the boy that did that. So gotcha. I'd rather not share it. I don't want to put anybody down or anything like that, but you know, it, her mom was killed. And it was because of an umbrella that she's going to have a check for the rest of her life. Gotcha. Gotcha. If it wasn't for that umbrella, you know, she would, she'd give it all up for her mom back mm -hmm. 100%. But right. so I do share that story anytime I try to sell an umbrella because honestly, umbrellas are cheap and mm -hmm. the commission I make is, is pennies right. on that. So it's not like I'm trying to make more money to do it. I'm trying to do it to protect them. What is something you know now that you wish you knew three years ago when you started? How important liability is, how important yeah. life insurance is. Okay. Okay. I have a sign back on the wall. You can't read it because I'm blurred out, but it says, let me... My job is to ask you about life insurance. Don't make it my job to explain to your family you don't have it. Gotcha. Um, <laughs> how do you define success, Kimberly? For me, success is when I go home and I feel good about the job I did. I did my best. I want to help my clients. I want to help my boss improve her job or improve her, her agency. And we do that by Google reviews. When I see those Google reviews come out and they're glowing and they say, Kim did a great job helping me, you know, get my home and auto insurance. It, it makes me feel good. To me, that's success. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there anything that you would like to share with us and our audience? Well, we touched a little bit on life insurance. I would like to, you know, it's very important to have life insurance and most people have life insurance through their job and that's great. I'm glad they do. However, most life insurance you have through your job, if you leave that job for any reason, you get fired, you retire, you quit, whatever the reason is, you probably can't take that life insurance with you. And it is great to have that because your boss is going to pay for part of that too. Mm -hmm. But it's always good to have a policy when you're that, that's a privately owned policy. Mm -hmm. One that you can always keep. Is that what you mean? One that you can keep, whether you get a term life insurance and, and term life and whole life, for those that don't know, term is like renting an apartment. You have it as long as you pay rent for it. When you're done, you're done. Whole life is you pay for it like your mortgage. And when you get that paid off, you have it for the rest of your life. Right. And, you know, have a burial, just enough to cover your burial and whatever debt you have. Okay. Don't make your family have to pay for that. Mm -hmm. The younger you are, the cheaper insurance is. Yeah. So yeah. if you can get it when you're young, you know, you've got, I wrote one of my friend's son, I wrote him, I believe it was a million dollar policy and he pays next to nothing for it. And he's going to have it paid off when he's like 35 years old. So 
that means for the rest of his life, he has this policy. It's going to gain cash value. He can mm -hmm. borrow against it. It's going to be there when and if he passes away. So whether it's his mom and dad now or his wife and children later that have to deal with that. Gotcha. Gotcha. With, with the success you've had thus far in your new career, what do you see as your biggest challenge going forward? Oh, when to retire? <laughs> <laughs> I have at least 10 more years before I retire. <laughs> but my biggest challenge is there is another designation I'd like to go for. And I know that those classes kind of scare me a little bit. So I'll eventually start those. I mean, if I want to sit at this desk or do I want to move up to be an agency owner or whatever? Your contact information is right below the screen here. Is there a, a way that uh, you, you would like the edit, uh, audience to know what was the best way to contact you or find out more about you? So call the office. There are five agents here and we're all more than willing to help you. But call the office if you want to ask for me. That's great. <laughs> There's also a website. The website is not really up to date. Now that she is, you know, complete owner, has all the loans paid off, she's going to work on changing the website a little bit. We also have a Facebook page. So there's a lot on there. Mm -hmm. If you do go on to Google and read our reviews, we have great reviews on there. We're a five star agency. Okay. Well, yeah, that's good for our, 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 uh, uh, listeners today. So that's all the questions I have, Kim. I thank you for being on. Ladies and gentlemen, come back next week and see Better Business, Better Life, Building on Your Success. And Kim, again, for being on today. But ladies and gentlemen, remember that the, the best way to predict the future is to create it because it was not raining when Noah built the ark. See you all yeah. next week. Thanks, Terry. This has been the Better Business, Better Life, Building on Your Success podcast. If you have questions about creating tax-free wealth and income, forward-looking tax mitigation, strategic risk mitigation, wealth preservation and legacy planning, and advanced financial management, go to DuponAdvisory.com or email Terry at DuponAdvisory.com.